Okay, one last and quick video. Uh, I got it done. And I'll show you <clears throat> some things I've done to uh, to get this thing going. Uh, last video, you noticed that there was no gas tank. I found an extra gas tank laying around, and I devised a mount, and I'll show it to you. And I also devised a guard, which you can see at the back, made of a uh, refrigerator cabinet, or shelving, that I use as uh, somewhat of a protector over the uh, the driveline area. I'll get a little bit better view of the, see how that uh, is bent at the top, and it goes down, and all I did was just a, a uh, hose clamp right there and right there and there's a little notch that it fits in on that bracket and I put another hose clamp right there and you can see it's just sturdy the thing is nobody can go up and get their hands in there which is good the this is a universal style um, of gas tank I bought it, it, it actually was on the motor uh, a while back um, like I said when this was set up right this motor interfered up here and it couldn't I couldn't use the original stock uh, gas tank and that's why I went with that one I devised a mount out of a you can see it right there one and a half by one and a half uh, square tubing it's bolted to the block and then there is a, another 7 sixteenths uh, right up in there lock nut and then I got a big hose clamp in the middle and it is sturdy as all get out when you do stuff like that you got to be careful because the, the weight gasoline weighs between eight and nine pounds per gallon and this is about a half gallon tank and up high and moving around there's the chance for a disaster so uh, I have a nice big fuel filter set up right here and you can observe that's a good thing is you can observe it and I have an on and off switch mar clearly marked both here and on here and so everything is good to go I've got the uh, chain is lubed up real well you lube the um, clutch right into there there's a bronze censored bronze bushing inside there and there's a little circlip up there uh, sometimes you can pop that loose and, and, and lube that. I like to lube them with a um, graphite lube when I'm first putting them together. But this and all I used was like a 90 weight. And you can hear how quiet that is. The chain, the, all the sprockets are in line. The chain is put together good and it sounds good. To hear no popping, that means the chain is happy and everything turns over easy. Um, racers always look at ways to uh, and I do this too on, on my go-karts to make it easier for the motor to turn this stuff over and when you do that it makes everything happy I re touched up some paint uh, the seat is in there good to go so oh, I got that one finished and there were some neat tricks in there that you could probably apply to your stuff but um, you can see I painted the rims primer. They used to be painted silver, and the silver paint just came off, so I just went primer, and it looks okay for now. But hopefully that'll make some kid a good Christmas gift. So this will be the last video of this, and this is, uh, like I said, an old dingo, and I did some nice uh, tricks here that anybody could do theirs, too. A uh, nice little trick here, too. I always pad anything that my body comes close to there in the middle. Wrap it with, uh, I prefer to use the Gorilla Tape, the Gorilla Duct Tape, rather than the electrical tape. Electrical tape falls apart. The Gorilla Tape is pretty good stuff, real good stuff. But this is what it looks like. There's lots of good tips and tricks right here that you could do to your go-kart if you got one like this. And I'll uh, close out and that'll be good on this one.